Hello everybody and welcome back to a new series. In this series we will talk about the programming language C Sharp and its connection to the Unity engine. So let's go. What is C Sharp language? If you're coming from an engineering background you must have some knowledge about it. But in short C Sharp is an object oriented language and it's built by an engineer in Microsoft back in 2000. And since then it's been evolved and become one of the biggest languages in the world. It's mainly used in native applications in Microsoft Studio and most importantly in Unity for us. As I said, C Sharp is the main language used to develop games in Unity. That's what we're going to talk about more in details in the next couple of minutes, but I want to describe one thing, which is the execution of the code in C Sharp using .NET in the native language and then in Unity. So as you know, in order to do any logic in a game, you have to create a script. And inside the script, you will write some logic and the logic will be implemented. So if you create a, a default script in here, let's call it test. As soon as we create it, let it compile. And then we run it. Every script has to be executed. And by executed, I mean compiled and then run through the code and then you know just execute all the stuff that you wrote. And how that happens is a bit different between Unity and the native .NET. In the native .NET, it's quite simple. Uh, you just write your scripts, and then there's going to be a method called main, and that's going to be the entry place for any code that you do. Whereas in Unity, there's a, something called script lifecycle, and it goes something like this. As we're all familiar, uh, whenever we create a script in Unity, we get this default setup start and update and those are called money behavior scripts what do they do is through those methods we get the logic going in our game as you see there's a lot of methods in here and it's set up properly as an order to show you what goes first and then what goes last and as you see you'll find start here and they have a wake on enable reset fixed update and a lot of physics methods and then right here you'll see something called update so those are the two most commonly used ones again there's a lot of them you can use them for other purposes and then each one will sh will have its own functionalities for example uh, the star runs first at once only but then update runs every frame whereas fixed update it runs every fixed frame that's used for physics and one of the famous ones that we use is on disable or on quit or on dis destroy. So these ones are used to dispose elements, which we will have, you know, some examples later on in the tutorial. What we're going to do right now is do some examples. And if you get lost about what we're writing and what is this classes, what is the method, it's okay. We're going to explain this in later episodes, but I just want to ex show how the order goes in Unity. So as we saw, we have start and update. I'm going to add another one called on disable. So what this does, if we follow this whole sequence, on disable is happening when the script was disabled during the, in that frame, where on enable it enables again. So it happens right at the end when the decommissioning is happening, whereas on enable happens on initialization. So right now we have something at the start, which is called start, and something in in the middle that happens every frame called update and lastly on disable so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a debug.log let's call it start and I will do the same thing and update in here call it update and on disable so what's going to happen is we will get one event from here says start and then one on disable when we close everything but update will keep on printing all the time so going back to unity we will have to look at a place called console which is at the bottom if you don't see it just go window general and console as soon as you have it it opens here this is the main place that prints all the debugs that we have everything that relates to the code is going to be put in here so whether you have a problem, you get a notification, errors, warnings, you'll see it over here. So what I'm going to do is, I've saved my script, and I have to put the script in the scene in order to test it. Again, we'll talk about money behavior, 
everything in the next episode. This is merely just to explain the life sequence of the methods. And if I play it, I need to click on this button because this one toggles on the debugs. You will see that, let me stop the whole game. You will see in the sequence that we got start and then we, we're getting a bunch of updates. If you see, like we got a lot of updates, 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 and at the end, they should be called on disabled. This is a simple example of how Unity methods work. And this is where we can d define what do we want to do. Uh, do we want to set the position of the player at the start of the game? We want to make sure that we check the player's surroundings every frame. Or we want to make sure that we get the input for physics, actions. Or for example, we want to disable something when we disable the player and then we enable it when we enable the player. Or we want to destroy something when we kill the player, which is on player on destroy so there's a bunch of things you can do in here and then we're not going to go in details in all of them but i'm going to put a link in the description so we can see all these stuff in detail but later on in the, in the episodes of the tutorials we're going to have a more dive in into c sharp itself and how it works with unity so i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you're excited please hit the like and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one Bye bye